And we're back here at JC's Comics and More, your pop culture superstore at 6725 West Central Avenue. That is Toledo, Ohio, 4361741953160097. Going through the big collection and finishing up the Amazing spider man as I just put in numerical order. Uh, so I can get these things bagged up. Uh, my last video ended up running out. Didn't realize that I ran out of time. So I spoke all the way through. It ended at 91. And uh, and we have to do a little bit of a recap here. And also with 91, I talked about Gwen. So we missed some of the other stuff with this. Just making sure that there isn't anything clipped out. That there isn't any uh, loose pages or anything. Um. Gwen is, uh, she's confused, uh, thinking that there's a corrupt politician to help her out. And you gotta love these old ads. Look at these old cool ads. And the letters pages, too. People, people say these things are reprinted. They do reprints, that's for certain. Uh, but reprint the letters pages, reprint these old house ads. That's some cool stuff there, man. That, uh, I mean, these Marvel bullpen pull bulletins. Uh, yeah, that gives people... You know, that gives people something, you know. Spider-Man, the one who killed my father. The attack of the Iceman. So, we've got number 92 with the great John Romita cover. Um, you're facing a pro, Webhead. Of course, he cuts Spidey's line. He's holding Gwen. Old um, Frosty isn't thinking what's going to happen to Gwendolyn. But uh, you've got Gil Kane and John Romita artwork. Spidey grabs Gwen to try to protect her. Next issue is with the Prowler. And the letters pages are great. See, there's a Todd Bake from Detroit, Michigan wrote a letter in this. So if you know Todd Bake from Detroit, Michigan, tell him, hey man, I saw your name in a, in a Marvel Comics funny book 50 years ago. But of course, Spidey and, and Iceman team up in the end to put away the bad guys. We've got the return of the Prowler again. Why Marvel never used the Prowler much after this, I have no idea. He was a cool character. Uh, Prowler, of course, uh, created by John Romita Sr. and Jr. But uh, this is the last that we saw of the Prowler for quite a while. Here, once again, they're talking about the uh, death of Captain Stacy. And John Romita did the art on this one here. Um, Gwen talks about how she's going to London. Live with her, uh, her, her uh, aunt and uncle. And... Uh, Peter's broken up about it. Again, we look at the letters pages. And again, Todd Bake, he had two letters in a row. Man, that dude was, uh, he was on fire. He decides to, uh, Peter decides to finally go after Gwen. He got there just as she left. Uh, she's gone. I've lost everything. I've lost her. I've lost everything. Just when I needed it the most, even my spider power failed me. My spider power, I think what it cost me over the years, the heartaches, the ego, the sorrow, and now it cost me the girl that I love. Poor Peter Parker. But he helped uh, Hobby get, uh, Hobby, Hobby Brown get some help that he needed. Um, And then the next issue I have is number 94. This is, uh, retells his origin. This is the first time I, uh, when I had this issue as a kid. And the first time I, I uh, uh, got a chance to see Spidey's origin. You know, John Romita and Sal Basama. So shows him getting bit by the spider. Fighting back, jumping away from the, the car. Building the web shooters, because he was... He was a genius, making himself his costume. So due to that strange, amazing accident of fate, Spider-Man was born. Shows him letting the burglar get uh, run free, and then coming home to find Uncle Ben was killed, was murdered. And then he goes after the person and, and figures and sees it's the fate, the face of the person who killed him. Uh, because I didn't lift a finger to help a criminal, I will always feel partially responsible for what happened to Uncle Ben. Never again refuse to use my spider power wherever it can help the cause of justice. I'll spend the rest of my life making up for the death of Uncle Ben. And everything with Aunt May. Got this great splash page right there, Spidey and his villains. And 
There's the beetle. When Aunt May went to go get some groceries, and the beetle kidnapped her. And he he dropped her, Spidey grabbed her, you know, had to taunt him to make him drop her now before he flew, flew past the web net. There, you'll be safe. Now cushioned with the fall. Is it safe with you? I should have known. I'd frighten her as much as I did the beetle. I have to be fast before she panics. Aunt May was always deathly afraid of Spider-Man. Got number 95. Uh, Peter decides to go to London to find Gwen. Again, great art by John Romita and Sal. Of course, he gets to London, and that good old Parker Luck follows him as there's terrorists trying to blow up the plane, so he has to stop them. He does, then he uh, gets contacted or runs into some of the Bobbies and uh, Inspector Hargraves uh, in there in London. So he's flying around London, he's left flinging around London. You see, he goes past where Gwen's with uh, uh, her, her Aunt Arthur and his, his, his Uncle Arthur, her Uncle Arthur and, his, and her aunt. And, you know, it looks like it's, it is possible, but he's here. First he killed my father, and now he's traveled all the way across the ocean after me. Well, yes, sort of. There's a person kidnapped, that uh, him and his son, that uh, Spidey... Uh, that they he comes in and frees them, and ironically enough, it's somebody that he met as Peter Parker on the plane. My dad's a government agent. You government agent too. An American delegate. So Spidey saves him, and then he sees that all of the papers, uh, Spider-Man, of course, London knows he's there. And, you know, the one thing I didn't think, she knows that England, now that all England knows that Spider-Man is here, how can Peter Parker go visit Gwen? She'll be certain to suspect. She'll put two and two together in a minute. Wherever Peter Parker goes, Spider-Man appears. I don't dare chance it. Once again, when I win, I lose. This time I'm losing Gwen. Why does it always happen? Why, why? And then the uncle uh, shows uh, Gwen that she wasn't seeing things, that Spidey is there. Uh, and Gwen thinks that uh, the uncle's like, perhaps you were too quickly to condemn him, child. After all, you were under a great strain of poor George's death. You may have done him an injustice. It all comes back to me now. Even Father used to say he didn't think Spider-Man was really bad. I'm, I'm so mixed up if only Peter were here. I hoped and prayed he'd love me enough to come after me, but I guess I was wrong about many things. And as Peter Parker's going back to the airport, maybe it's best this way. She never even wrote. She's probably even forgotten me. Next issue is the Green Goblin. These are great historical issues. If you look at these issues that the Green Goblin appeared in 96, 97, 98, you'll notice that something is missing. Something missing that the previous issue had. Missing the Comics Code Authority. Uh, at that time, the Comics Code had a strict policy against uh, any mention of drugs, uh, or they would not... Uh, they would not uh, approve the comics. And Marvel at that time, Stanley felt that these stories were strong enough. Uh, they weren't highlighting, they weren't uh, glamorizing drugs. That uh, There was a big drug problem back in the 60s, just like we do now with the opioids and, and heroin. Uh, and they decided to still print this issue. And the publisher... Uh, Goodman decided to let them. He could have very well told Stan, write a different story or take the drugs out. They wrote it, wrote it. It was published without the Comics Code of Authority, and this became a uh, landmark issue. I remember when the issue came out, uh, my parents bought it for me. I didn't think anything of it, and they didn't think anything that the Comics Code of Authority. So did the Comics Code of Authority really, you know, really make people buy comics or, or not buy comics? Uh, but great issues. We've got Harry. Harry's strung out on pills. We've got Norman. He's come back under the strain. And 
These issues are uh, Gil Kane and John Romita. Got Mary Jane. She's pissed off at Harry. And Harry's, he's all strung out. Thinks that Peter's taking his girl. There it is. He's taking some pills. This is all I need to make me feel on top of the world again. Now I'll just go and lie down. Peter comes back, finds Harry all strung out and needs help. But he hears that laugh outside the window, the goblin. Did you think I wouldn't find you, Parker? Did you expect the green goblin to let Spider-Man live? He keeps thinking about Gwen. You had Gil Kane and Frank Giacola did the art on this one here. Uh, Gil did the cover. He sees uh, Norman the Goblin, sees Harry, and it kind of hits home. Uh, they have their battle. Little did we know it was close to being their final battle. Peter takes down on the guy selling the, the pills to uh, Harry. And then the next issue, issue 99 before issue 100, uh, Prison Break. Features an appearance by Johnny Carson. And there's Ed McMahon. And as they're there, he's getting ready to do the talk show. The cops show up. So he takes off. But at the end, somebody... Ah, that's right. The previous issue, I forgot to... Uh, there was a happy ending in the previous issue. At the end, uh, he's walking and he sees Gwen. Gwen has come back. And uh, as they put here, and now before we eagerly count the days before the next issue, we just want to ask you one little question. Who says we never gave give Spidey a happy ending? So Gwen and Spidey... Or Gwen and Peter are once again back together, which is a very happy moment. And then we have issue 100. Issue 100, uh, a big issue, uh, certainly. Uh, but let me just backtrack real quick here to the drug issue. DC, a few months later, came out with their own uh, issues that that's dealt with the with drugs, with uh, uh, Speedy. Uh, Green Arrows, Oliver Queen sidekick, doing heroin. Very powerful cover here. And unlike the Spider-Man issues, you see that this does have the Comics Code Authority on it. That at that point, the Comics Code decided to change their policy, realizing this was an important issue. So they changed their policy that as long as that they were uh, showing drugs in, in you know, not a positive, but a, a negative light, uh, that they the comic would be would be approved uh, going back to issue 100 uh marvel these days these companies these days think that these high numbers scare people off i remember when i was a kid when i bought this issue i bought it in walbridge ohio there was a carryout that's next to a bar that my dad would go to and he had me on the weekend so uh we ended up uh ended up going next door and seeing this issue knowing it was coming out and just being so happy this is amazing spider-man number 100 you know being just so excited as a child to get this 100th anniversary issue You've got this great john ramita cover with all the villains and his his girlfriends and friends and and aunt may and even jonah jameson's on here he's hidden here someplace uh you've got you got captain stacy there uh you got Flash Thompson, you got Doc Ock, you got the Lizard, you got Craven, there's Jonah right there, and Gil Kane and Stan Lee. Uh, this would be Stan Lee's last issue writing, uh, but such a great issue that he's trying to get rid of the superpowers for Gwen, the spider powers for Gwen, and unfortunately it backfires. Gives him six arms. And again, as a kid, I was just like just freaked out. But the other great thing about this issue, it has uh, comments from uh, from issue 96, and people were writing, never before had your character been so real, your subplot so realistic. I find it gratifying to read that the hero of, cha of campuses, Spider-Man voices thoughts which are upmost in the minds of concerned citizens. 
uh, Barry Pearl from Forest Hills, New York. You took a stand. Uh, I want to commend, commend you and your publisher, from Goodman, for the boldness of playing guts. Drug abuse has to be fought. It's terrible that the Comics Code wants you to close your eyes and pretend it's not there. Comics help those readers, if possible, besides entertaining them. Uh, as I see your message reached at least one person in need, uh, all the effort you put into this was well worth it. Uh, face, face front, everybody. Marvel Comics has. Uh, so just such a, a, a great way of uh, uh, showing that, that the people did realize what was happening. I've got issue 103. Uh, I sold my 101. Did not have a 102 in this issue. Again, got Gil Kane. They go to the Savage Land. You got Frank Giacola once again doing the art. So Spider-Man's in the Savage Land with Kazar, and you see Craven here, and you got Gwen Stacy running around in a bikini. You know what more can you want? Oh, by the way, we've got uh, we've got this creature here, uh, Gog. That it Craven, something that he raised as a pet. Got 104, part two of that. Get Rick Gil Kane cover. Luckily for Spidey, he was never seen, so they can't put two and two together. However, Jonah catches a quick glimpse of him. You know, Gwen, anybody, did you see what I... No, I guess you didn't. He must have got to me. Must have imagined it. Couldn't have been him. Not down here. It just... And then Peter shows up. Uh, Peter was thought to be... Uh, Lost and injured in the previous issue. We've got issue 105 with the Spider Slayer. They brought that back. Uh, he's back to, glad to be back in town. Uh, but uh, Professor uh, Smythe has cameras set up all over the place. Big Brother is watching. And guess what Big, Big Brother sees? Uh, he sees Peter changing. And we can look at the letters pages. And knowing of great significance. We've got this great... John Romita cover, Squash Goes the Spider. He knows that he's been watched. And you got Mary Jane dressed in this little outfit there as John Romita could pull off. A new Spider Slayer. But he realizes he's been watched, so he goes to uh, Kurt Connors and he makes a mask. And later... He pulls the mask off, showing that he was just, uh, just pulling, uh, you know, just, uh, just messing with him. Got the second part, or the last part, 107. Uh, great issue. You got Jonah. Jonah, of course, always has to get his, uh, get involved in there. Got great shots of Gwen. John Romita and Frank Giacola. Got 108, focusing on Flash Thompson when he was over in the Vietnam War. And something that has come back to haunt him. Very powerful stories. Marvel, Marvel back then, actually, no, Stan did write this. I thought uh, Roy Thomas, or let's see, Roy Thomas write these? I thought Stan, nope, Stan, uh, Stan still wrote those. I thought Roy Thomas came. Maybe Roy wrote 101. Um, but Marvel... Never really shied away from uh, important issues. Uh, here's a letter from a Mr. David Michelaney. Uh, you may know him as a future writer for The Amazing Spider-Man. Him and Mark Bagley. Here they're talking about Luke Cage getting his own series in the bullpens. Again, reprinting that stuff is would be great. The second part, Doctor Strange is involved with Flash Thompson. Again, the story with uh, from uh, the Vietnam War um, brought Craven the Hunter back. He lived. He did not die. And then you've got the Given. Uh, there's a new villain. Here we talk about Ghost Rider, his first appearance. Let's take a look at the letters page again. Let's see if there's anyone else in here. No one of note with this issue here. Issue 112. Spidey kind of got... He's, he's got fed up with everything that's happening and just doesn't care anymore. And at the end, we find a familiar villain has returned. Doc Ock is back. Spidey loses his mask in this issue here. A very 
clean issue and the mask gets turned into the daily bugle Spidey has to get himself a regular mask it doesn't really fit that well but he has to make do and at that point they revealed that Peter Parker had a ulcer uh, you've got Hammerhead uh, this is his second appearance. His first appearance was in the 113. Uh, again, great, great stuff here. Um, Gary Conway took over writing around this time here. Let me see, which was Gary's first issue? Gary Conway script. Gary Conway, so Stan, Stan's last issue may have been the, the 109 with Gary Conway taking over in 110. Uh, then we got issue 115 uh, with Aunt May Assassin. In this issue here, she goes to uh, work for uh, Doc Ock. And Peter's uh, spider sense does not work against Aunt May because it does not perceive her as a villain. We've got 116, the Smasher. Uh, this 116 and 117. These were issues that were sort of redone from the Spectacular Spider-Man, the uh, second short-lived series in the 60s of a magazine Marvel tried to do a Spider-Man. So those three issues there. And then 118 led into 119 and 120 with the, uh, the Hulk. And then, of course, 121 and 122, the death of the Goblin and the death of Gwen Stacy. Uh, first appearance of Man-Wolf. Got John Romita, the great Ross Andrew takes over the art on the next issue. Found out the man wolf is Jonah's son. And here we've got the first uh, page of uh, Ross Andrews with him and uh, John Romita. And it looks very John Romita. It's, it's hard to tell it's Ross Andrew. John's inks are very overpowering. Got a brand new vulture that showed up in uh, issue 127, and he was there for the two issues. 129 was the first appearance of of the Punisher and uh, the uh, the Jackal. We did sell that. Uh, got the first appearance of the Spider Mobile. Again, as a kid, I was pretty excited about this. You know, I like that. Uh, again, you got some great art by Ross Andrew. The almost wedding of Doc Ock and Aunt May, which took place up in Canada. And Spidey uh, just put a thwart at that, and you had Hammerhead in there, and the island blew up, and you thought Doc Ock and Hammerhead both died. The uh, return of the Molten Man was in 132. First time we had seen him since issue 28. And issue uh, 132 was art was by John Romita. And then you've got the second appearance of the Punisher. You've got the first appearance of the Tarantula. Marvel value stamps were in the uh, in the comics at full full steam at that right there. Uh, Ralph Macchio, who became a editor at Marvel at that point. So again, you just never know who you're going to see. It would be really nice again if they reprinted those letters pages in the reprints, just because this stuff's pretty neat, man. Deathlock, Deathlock uh, showing up in the Marvel Universe. There you go. You got the thing. Clip them and collect them. You got this great, you get this great ad there. How sad. And there you go. And get another one. You know, giant sized man thing. He fights the glob. A giant sized man thing fights the glob. Think about that for a second. Harry Osborn becomes the Green Goblin. That he was there that fateful night. And saw the, his father was the Green Goblin and was killed. And he blames Peter for his father's death. You got MJ looking hot as ever. And her apartment was rigged to blow up. There he is. He's back. The Green Goblin lives again. Got issue 138 with the Mind Worm, a short-lived character. Peter went to go live with uh, Flash Thompson for a while because the apartment was blown up. Then you've got the, the Grizzly and Return of the Jackal. And then finally, the last two I have is 
Amazing Spider-Man Annual 6, which reprinted Amazing Spider-Man Annual 1 with the Sinister 6. Of course, with that just outstanding Steve Ditko artwork. Um, I mean, this stuff is classic. And then we've got issue number 9, Annual 9 of uh, Amazing Spider-Man. This reprinted the second issue of... Uh, spectacular Spider-Man. That issue was in color. The first issue was in black and white. So, again, as a kid, this was great. I got a chance to to see this, and you get to see Mary Jane that she had a, a short haircut, Bob. But uh, but great, great stuff. If you uh, certainly, if you like these videos, subscribe. And if you do subscribe, smash that bell. Thank you.